Hello, it's Jay here again, and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we are still working on the player one movement, and we are still going to get some of the more basics in place. So, let's begin right at the very top of the script, and we'll create a type private character controller. And we'll just give this a naming convention of underscore player controller. Let's close that line off straight into the comments. Defines player character controller naming convention. And we also need a another animation clip so let's just copy that line for the idle and we'll paste it in and we'll change this from idle to walk we'll change the comment as well and actually I think I'll move this line above there so with that in place let's come here and we'll create a type private again and we'll say collision flags and we'll just give this a naming convention of underscore collision flags let's close that line off and in the comments we'll say the last collision flag returned from controller. We'll put movement as well. And I'll just fix that little typo there. So we'll just save that for the moment. And then we'll come to the void start. And I'm going to put this right at the very top, I think. We'll say underscore player controller is equal to get component, open and close brackets, inside the brackets, of type character controller. We'll come to the end of the line, we'll open and close brackets again, and we'll close that line off. And in the comments, we'll say... Cache's player's character controller. And this will become more relevant in a later video. So, with those in place, in fact, let's come to the player one states, the enum. And we'll add a comma to player one idle. And we'll add two more. We'll say walk left, player walk left, and player walk right. And as always, I'll remember to leave the comma off the last one. And with this, we'll come to the I enumerate function. And we'll copy these three lines. So case, play one states, play one idle, open and close brackets, and break. And we'll just paste that in twice. Oh, and I've just noticed that's in the wrong place. It should come after that first close bracket. So we'll quickly change that out. And we'll come here and we're going to copy the player one idle void. And we're going to copy that twice. And then we're going to come and copy that naming convention, player walk left. And we're going to paste it in there and here as well. It will turn red for a moment until we change one of these voids to player walk left. And we'll change the debug log as well. And as you can see, that red error has now gone. 
And we'll also do it for play at walk right. So let's paste that in there. And here as well in the private voids. So that's all the errors now gone. And we're also going to come here. And we'll copy the player one idle anim function. And we're going to change this to player one walk anim. And we'll paste it in there and there. And we also want to paste it in here. And here as well. And I'll just change out of the comments. Now a little note here. For player walk left, so when we're moving away from the opponent, I do not have a retreat animation. So those of you that do for your character, you can obviously just create another void and just call that when the player is walking away. But what I am going to do is I'm going to modify the walk animation for when the player walks away from the opponent comp compared to when it would play normally when we're walking towards. But I'm going to do that at a later date because I know that a lot of you want to get past this to the point where we can actually start moving the player around. So I'm going to have this just for testing and then obviously I will come back to it in a later video and we'll change that and make the animation look far more applicable so I hope that's okay for everybody um, but that's what I'm going to do as I said if you do not want to do that obviously you can just c copy this void and just name one for example play one walk left at him and another one play one walk right at him and just call them in the applicable states so let's in fact just save that off there for the moment and we're going to downsize the script and we're going to come to our resources folder and we're going to drag in the first character model remember to reset the transform and let's zoom in on this character now what I'm going to do here, you will need to do for every single one of your characters. However, I'm just going to do it for one character just to show you how it's done. And it's exactly the same for all the others. So no change there. So let's just come to our animations. And I will pick one. So there we go, there's the walk animation. And I'll just assign that in the slot in the inspector. We're going to come to add component, we're going to say physics, and we'll apply a rigid body. And if necessary, we'll adjust this at a later date, but we're just going to leave it as it is for now again just to move forward and get things up and running quickly and we'll also need to add component physics again and of type character controller now i'm sure most of you are, are aware of how to set up a character controller but i'm still going to go through it just for those that don't so the first thing we need to change the height to match our character and we also need to change the center position on the Y here so let's move this about and you will need to experiment with these values until you find a value that suits your model and I think nearly there so let's zoom in a bit closer so the character controller wants to be just touching the bottom of the feet and just touching the top of the head 
Now, this isn't perfect, but it's fairly close for the purposes of this video. You get the basic idea. And for the radius, we need to shrink this down in my case. And what we need to do is change the radius to encompass the body. So as you can see, I've changed the radius here. So it encompasses all of the body, included in the shoulder. I'm not worried about the arms. We don't need those included in the character controller. But all the body is in, the legs, the head, and all the body, including the shoulders. Again, it's not exactly perfect and will require more tweaking. But again, I think you get the basic idea. And you can spend a lot of time adjusting this, making it really good, really perfect for each and every one of your characters. But obviously, that would make for a very long and boring video. So I'm just showing you roughly how to set it up but please spend as much time as necessary to get yours exactly correct and once we've actually got that in position we'll just hit apply and then we can simply delete that character from the scene and if we come to resources folder and select that character model Everything is now in place. You can obviously move these up if you wish and arrange them any way you like. So, with that said, I think we're going to leave it here for this video. And I think in the very next vid video, we're going to handle actually swapping to these states. And we may get around to actually <laughs> implementing a little bit of movement into the character. Um, which I know you're all looking forward to. But And I am trying to get to it as fast as possible. But I'm afraid getting this basic, these basics in place are necessary for movement to work. So I have to get these in place first before we can actually begin moving a character so i hope you can all bear with me we will get round to it in the next lesson and i hope to see you then and as always bye for now